What's up guys, Max here, and I'm with Nico, who is the senior producer at 2K Games for the Bureau, XCOM Declassified, formerly just XCOM. This is this is a game that's been a long time coming. Yeah, it's we've been we've had some development time since 2010 when we first announced the game, uh, when we first uh, had people's eyes on it. Yeah, it's you know we've been working on it for a bit. And now back then it was it was a first person shooter, mm -hmm. but it was still under the hood. It was going to be a kind of a, a very tactical. Uh, you know, plan your attack sort of thing. You know, it had that sort of emergent DNA of battle focus that right. that we've sort of been exposing more people to, which is this on-the-fly HUD element that really gives you control of the battlescape by allowing you to place your your command units strategically on the on the battlefield and either flank units, use their special moves, etc. That that essence of the XCOM game that we introduced way back then and what has sort of come to be in the current game, that's one of the major constants that we've sort of carried with us throughout development. Okay, yeah, no, so, so to back this up, battle focus is the, is the core thing. You go out on the, on the battlefield and yep. you are uh, Agent Carter? Agent William Carter, yes. William Carter, and you have, you have two, uh, you know, two agents of your, of your choosing with you who've been yep. kind of leveled up and customized and everything. And on the fly, you can kind of uh, tell them where to go, which yes. sort of reminded me a little bit of, of Mass Effect, but also has kind of a Fallout Vats feel to it. But it's, it's kind of, uh, it's more than that. Tell, tell how, how that works. Well, the main thing is, is we have, you know, consequences behind what we do, right? there's permanent death in our game, which can be very problematic. So uh, to avoid that, we give the, we give the player uh, absolute control over what their agents do. When we put them behind cover, they will stay over there. They will react smartly to the AI environment. So uh, in addition to just being able to place them on the battlefield, there's also special abilities that each agent can level up through. They all have their own specific tech trees that they can uh, reveal along the way. It's actually pretty cool. And you can tinker with that depending on which agents you bring out on the field. They have different synergies if you bring a recon guy out versus uh, like a commando class that's more of like a heavy unit. So there's some, there's definitely a, like a consistent layer of depth the more that you drill down into battle focus, but it really is meant to keep you focused on the battlefield. It's real time um, and it's very quick reaction feeding. Like if you're the type of guy that doesn't want to like sit uh, for a couple of minutes and really sort of strategize about your grand scheme, it really is instantly gratifying and gives you instant power to move your guys around the field. Yeah, I mean, coming at it from the uh, from the XCOM enemy unknown angle, it felt very familiar, but at the same time much more fast-paced, which yeah. I thought was very cool. Um, going to uh, to customization, one thing that I, I really want to know is you've got you've got William Carter as your as your main yep. dude, and the agents are customizable. How customizable are they? Can they be your family and friends? You can you can put them in the most ridiculous color schemes that you could possibly imagine for special agents. Uh, in addition to that, you can you can rename them to your okay. family and friends if you want to. Um, but I would hate to see them die. That would just be too heart wrenching. Uh, you don't have my family and friends. So. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, and also, you can customize your particular loadout, whatever guns, weapons that you want to bring with you on the field. And then they actually have cool backpacks, which is probably the only time I've ever really said this in my <laughs> life. But they actually have cool alien technology inspired backpacks. <laughs> So in addition to carrying lunch, they actually carry different attributes that you can bring with you on the field. Okay, I like, I like that, the idea that the, the attributes are just in the backpack. Now, how, uh, how, how broken up are the missions? We've, we've sort of seen there's the, there's the main kind of base area, uh, sort of the mm -hmm. a more, a more uh, immersive version of the, the fish tank view in Enemy Unknown, except you're actually walking around as, as Carter in kind of the, uh, the main base. How much stuff is there to do there, and how, how much choice do you have? coming out of the main base into the, the rest of the, the Well, game. if I was going to give it like an RPG analog, right? It's like you're in the new town, you're talking to the citizens, I lost my dog, you know, but <laughs> we're talking about like this is an alien invasion, the tone and serious of, of that in like this NASA uh, race for this space sort of environment. It is the center hub for all of our uh, sort of narrative through line um, context that we have. Mm -hmm. So um, before you go out on a mission, essentially you'll get uh, lots of intel from throughout the mission that will then uh, give you some tactical information that you'll need as you uh, select your different agents and go out on the battlefield. And, and narrative-wise, this is this is 1962. Yes. Uh, aliens are invading. Uh, and is this all just set in the United States, or does this become like a worldwide thing too? Uh, this is, you know, it's the origin story. It's before XCOM really became this global uh, institution, this global sort of protective uh, organization. So it is focused on the heartland primarily. It is focused on all of North America. And that's what's, you know, very interesting and, and compelling about our story is that when the aliens first attack, uh, the Bureau, which was established by JFK to sort of ward off this uh, Soviet invasion, they don't really know who's invading. They, could, it be, you know, <laughs> could it be some Cuban attack? Could it be the Russians? 
It's aliens, right? Like so, there's, <laughs> it's all set on uh, on the North American landscape. Uh, so one thing I, I want to know is, I know that uh, you know the other XCOM games, they have a ton of replay value. People love to just kind of go through them over and over again, and kind of different, um, you know, uh, different courses of action sure. happen. Does this have that kind of replayability to it? Well, I think the great opportunity that we provide to the player is the ability to really. Uh, create their own specific agent team, right? You, you can play through this game completely different depending on which agency you have. So that's probably the biggest opportunity for the player to want to go through. Like, how would this mission have been if I had gone through with a recon guy and a commando versus a support guy and, you know, a uh, engineer? I mean, honestly, the game, it looks like, uh, you know, it looks like Mass Effect and Bioshock had a baby with XCOM and, you know, put a big Instagram filter on it, so it has a nice retro vibe. They love the baby. No. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm right, actually like really it. impressed with this. Um, awesome. Nico, thank you so much for thank talking. Thank you very much. When is the Bureau going to be officially declassified for the general public? Uh, it will be declassified in North America August 20th and worldwide uh, August 23rd. Well, great. Thank you so much for chatting. Thank you. You guys can stay tuned right here to Rev3 Games. I'm Max Goville. Take it easy. Thanks a lot.